Alrighty, here we are in Smoky Bay. We didn't make it um, to Palubi Bay or I think it was Haslam Bay. Um, the weather was absolutely atrocious when we left um, Streaky Bay. Um, I wanted to go to Palubi, not that the, I'd get my van down there, but I did want to see what four wheel drivers get up to when they park their uh, wagons up on the beach there. But uh, man, it wasn't a nice day. It was absolutely howling and with wind, the rain was coming at you from horizontal. And uh, yeah, it was a good day that I didn't invest in a four wheel drive and a, uh, a beach uh, site because I uh, wouldn't have been able to get there. <laughs> so then I moved on to Haslam Bay and uh, I think it's Hassan Bay, I think it is. It was uh, peeing down still there, windy, unsettled, and I wanted to go for a, a night fish off the off the jetty there for squid. And I uh, looked at Jude and she kind of had that look on her face where, hmm, don't like it. I'd rather have power and water. <laughs> well, here we are, Baldwin's Camp, um, just before Smoky Bay. It's about a K down the road to Smoky Bay, where the other caravan park is. But this is great value. It's 25 bucks a night, power and water. And uh, there's only four of us here. There's one, two, three, four. Incredible. So um, it has rained the last couple of days. We're, we're doing three, three days. This is our last day. We've got a little bit of a break in the weather, but as you can see, the clouds are pretty thick. So we could walk to Smoky Bay, but I've elected to grab the bikes out just in case we uh, get caught in a deluge and we can get home a bit quicker or shelter a bit, bit, bit easier. So uh, we're gonna go and see if we can walk off the jetty of uh, Smoky Bay. Fingers crossed. Well, as you can see, we've got our push bikes. Got my little trailer on with a little bit of fish and tackle. We're going to try and go down the local marina. Smoky Bay Seafoods. Big shout out to you. Well done. The only one in this huge complex that's actually open on a sad day. Oh, good. If you guys do have to have a life, I understand. But uh, we we're getting a little bit despondent that we couldn't find a, uh, a seafood spot. But we've got one. So Jude's getting her oysters. She's even been given a couple of uh, closed ones because we don't know how to shuck oysters and we heard a little secret that we're going to try. So uh, she's got some shucked ones. She's getting some other seafood as well. So let's say Smoky Bay Seafoods, well done. You're open on a sad day for us. Thank you. Huge area around here. There's, there's got to be like 20 odd sheds of different oyster companies and things. So pretty awesome. So uh, I guess I've got my little trailer, bikes and uh, see what Jude wants to do. She might want to drop those back to the, the van, which we can do, and then come back into town again and uh, go and do the, uh, the jetty if it's gonna hold off. We're back from our bike ride. Hasn't rained yet, wind was good. We managed to find that uh, oyster place. We want to try a little theory that we've been told. Yeah, here we go, here's Jude. Hi, so we've just picked up these two unchucked. Unchucked? Unchucked. <laughs> Oysters. So we're told to put them in the freezer, so flat side up, and so all the water goes down the bottom and freezes and they should open up once they die. So we're going to go and put them in the freezer now and in a couple of hours time we'll come back and see if they've opened. Yeah, she reckons it's got to get down to what, about minus five yeah. or something. Otherwise she said you could actually break, break the edges. Break the edge here with pliers and get a knife in there. So I'm going to go and put them in and we'll see how it goes. Give it a go. Made it down to the Smoky Bay jetty. Nice looking jetty. Um, judging by the, uh, the amount of shags that are parked up over here, look at them all. This is the swimming area in the jetty. And they're all just sitting here. They've either just had a big feed or it's not worth fishing at the moment. Lucky enough too, there's, there's quite a few other anglers here. And uh, so far the weather's pretty damn, just hanging in there nicely, so pretty pleased. Jude's given it a nice little cast out there, so uh, hey, couldn't think of anywhere better to be right now, but sitting here with a fishing rod, it's all good. See how we go, but 
Luckily we called into that uh, fish shop and uh, grabbed some oysters, grabbed some bugs, grabbed some whiting, <laughs> grabbed some squid. So we won't go hungry, but hey, all fun trying. All right, we have left our um, Smoky Bay, traveled about 50 k's um, up the uh, Air Peninsula to Seduna. Now Seduna is where we crossed when we did the Nullarbor and stopped for some oysters at Seduna and then traveled through to Adelaide and kind of was like, oh, I'm going to miss the uh, Air Peninsula and uh, the streaky bays, the smoky bays and all what we've gone and done. So now we can say, tick, we have done it. And uh, so Seduna, it's a beautiful little bay here. Um, I think it's Murat Bay. It's absolutely picture perfect today, apart from a bit of cloud cover. But uh, there's a little inlet over here, so it's a beautiful, peace and quiet little uh, bay. And uh, there's obviously a nice little jetty there too. So uh, Seduna, a nice little town, a very popular town, of course, when you come from the west and you come across the South Australia border and you've either got rid of all your fruit and vegetables and um, you need to stock up. So obviously a very busy supermarket where everybody's getting their fruit and vegetables and all their restock after coming across the Nullarbor. So uh, we've just done a restock and we're just going to head just slightly out of town um, and actually just start roughing it again. <laughs> Dude doesn't know about that but uh, we've just uh, had um, three days on power there at uh, Smoky Bay which was absolutely gorgeous and uh, best time to be there because the three days was quite crappy so uh, unsuccessful with the uh, the squid but uh, we've got a show tonight we'll stay tuned so we'll uh, get all our supplies away in the fridge and the freezer and uh, make our way to our next destination up the road oh, we've got to get some fuel and uh, empty a few bits and pieces before we go Right, now our little experiment, in case you didn't sort of uh, work out what was going on, we have a problem with shucking oysters. Now, I didn't say that in a bad way, shucking is the name given to um, shelling shellfish. And you use a, ideally a shucking knife and pop the oysters, so or shellfish. Now we have a lot of problems, Jude and I, with shucking the oysters and we heard that if we were to freeze the oyster, the shell would pop a little bit and you can get it out. So we've done so. I've got no, oh, no idea where to pop the knife here, but Attention. I would still probably go and buy the shuckers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That is still a fail in my mind. I'm sure some guys have had, oh look at that, just ruined it. <laughs> ruined a perfectly good oyster, probably threw so much shell in there it's not funny. Try the other one. And try this next one. it around this bit here because that's where she said you can get pliers off and break them. It was kind of a bit easier but still at the end of the day there is all sorts of crap in there that needs a good wash because of all the shell. No, I think I'd stick I think I'd stick to buying shucked oysters because <laughs> When, That's when a I, mess, not to mention you could slip, cut yourself with the, with the shell or the or a knife or, yeah, yuck, no good. 
All right, got these Morton Bay bugs. Got the fire all going. Gonna drop them on over on here onto the fire. Sizzle, sizzle. One. This is a beauty, this one. Two. Give them a few minutes. And should be good to eat. Yum, yum. I love these bugs. Had a jolly good feed at our last camp of the oysters and prawns and Morton Bay bugs. They went down very, very well. Anyway, good night's sleep. Travelled uh, today, a few k's up the road to uh, Wirra, Wirrula. 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 <laughs> oh, this one's going to be a tough one. It also says it's got a secret, and uh, we're going to have a little look around this town and uh, see what its secret is, eh? Let's go and have a check out. Right, well we made our next destination. Um, I'm not going to say this name too often because I get tongue-tied. Warula, Warula we're going to call it. How is that? Look at this. A little mini mart. Got a gas station out the front, swap and go. Um, there's a garage facilities down the other side there. And next door is the State Bank of South Australia I believe. That's a doozy as well, and Jude's gone further down the street to have a look at the next one. Looks like a, a church or something down there. Um, tavern, pub just over on the side. General store, Tricia and Stokey's General Store. Great little uh, support store to get your supplies, your milk, your coke, pies. And um, the town, congratulations, put this little park together. Um, there's about, uh, I think, eight power supplies around the place and you can pull up and there's, uh, if you pay your 15 bucks at the store, you get a, uh, a key and that gives you access to uh, fantastic uh, toilets, showers um, and there's um, access to the, uh, the kitchen facilities as well. So a great little... So 
and there you have a grand old memorial hall 1924 was the first stone laid it says 1926 for the building there so quite an old doozy so the town's got a population of um, I think just over a hundred so it's got a uh, yeah, general store it's got the uh, couple of mechanics grain supplies I suppose they call them as well um, what else we got the, got the pub got a golf course apparently it's got a bowling ground as well and uh, of course you can't miss the, uh, the very large silos as well so it's a it's a bit of a, uh, a grain hub where a lot of the uh, the farmers grain comes to be shipped and move about I guess it's also nice and close to places like um, Smoky Bay, Streaky Bay, Seduna, all those sort of places as well. So uh, it's not too far. Good little stop off. Now, leading out of Wurrula, that way, if you drive some, I think it's 300 kilometres, you'll end up at Glendambo. It's across a bit of rugged terrain. Uh, road can be pretty corrugated and pretty uh, rutty out I believe but it's a good little four wheel drive track um, pops out yeah Glendambo and then on the way to um, Cooper Pedy which is about 500 and something k's from here we're, we're all has a bit of a secret and we believe we know the secret now but I could be mistaken it is known for a world first an inland jetty so uh, the big secret with this jetty is it actually started life down on the coast at uh, Haslam. Now I nearly stopped at Haslam. We went in after Palubi, but because of the, uh, the bad weather, um, I didn't stay the night and we moved on to um, Smoky Bay. So this jetty was um, erected way back and um, not long ago, around about in the 2000s or something, I needed uh, re-renovating so uh, what they did is they bought a portion of the jetty to Barula and it's quite ironic because um, a lot of the um, the produce that went across this jetty to the ships um, came from this area so a lot of the the wheat the grain the meat the wool all those supplies and things would have crossed over that jetty so, so it's one of the, uh, the irony is it come back here um, they say it's an inland jetty and at the moment the tide is out so you can't quite see the water that's around it but uh, you're quite a fitting tribute to the town to give a little bit back from what it's uh, given the town of Haslam and things like that pretty cool so here we go I'm on a jetty it's interesting though they've got rules here still on the jetty so uh, no diving from any part of the, st the structure. Uh, dogs are permitted. But do you know what this jetty is used for? Back in the town. Okay, yeah, it was used for the uh, the transportation, you know, the shipping and getting things onto those boats and things. But now it has been used. I think it's the fifth hole of the golf course. <laughs> so you can come up here, place your ball down into the uh, the ground down on here and try your luck at uh, getting onto that fifth hole and I guess once you've completed the whole round you can visit the pub which is right here what they call it 16th hole or something goes to show how much I play golf anyway it's making me thirsty so I better go and do some research in there now Right, 
Now, have I got some very interesting news about Puchera. It has an ant. The ants are small, one centimeter in length and golden color. They are extremely timid, nocturnal, and really come out in temperatures warmer than 20 degrees centigrade. Since their discovery, scientists from all over the world, including the Soviet Union, Switzerland, and America, have visited Puchera to study them. Dr. Taylor calls the ants a living fossil and even goes to explain that not only is it the world's most primitive limited, a living ant, it is the second most primitive creature, even when fossil records are included. As Puchera at the time hosted the only known colony in the world, it is quickly listed on the Australian Heritage Commission National Estate Register to ensure that they are preserved and protected from future development. How's that? Cute little land. So uh, Puchera, it's got a uh, very interesting amount of history up there on the wall and uh, around the edges some of the uh, farm implements and machinery that's uh, used in a bygone era on the pastures and of course this absolutely incredible um, it's converted into a, uh, a nice gas oven now but uh, it used to belong to the bakery here in Puchera there is so much machinery around here one very interesting uh, relic that has been bought here it's uh, a bloke born back in 1870 he died back in 1954 I believe of uh, lip cancer after chewing a lot of tobacco warning don't do tobacco but here we go this is this is what we call a humpty how cool is that and he built this house out of kero kerosene tins um, used um, uh, what do they call them uh, sacks for mats and floors so it was out in a patch of scrub and it was used uh, he lived out in that and he was a um, well, obviously a stockman, farmer, and he helped dig wells and bits and pieces as well. But even uh, even they've used some of the uh, his technology, of course, on the uh, the old barn here as well. But yeah, how's that? Kerosene tins. Yeah, Peter Sheridan's house. He was born as the eighth child back in 1870, Port Lincoln. Um, he had many jobs ranging from stockman to station hand and working in the Streaky Bay Hotel. He built this house at Puchera in a patch of scrub in the 1920s. He built it out of flattened kerosene tins and poles cut from local pine trees. He constructed a bunk, cupboards and table and chairs from kerosene boxes. The floor was compacted hard dirt and the mats made from wheat bags. He suffered badly with asthma and he passed away in Adelaide from cancer of the lip after he used chewing tobacco and that was back in Well, there you have it. Fascinating little town of Puchera. Make sure when you're here, come and get a photo with the dinosaur ant. Go over there and have a look at Peter's Humpy, which is an amazing house built out of kerosene tins. And also cop a, cop a load of all the old machinery that's around here. There's a caravan park just across the road here. I think it's 30 bucks a night, um, power and water, which looks uh, quite Jurassic. <laughs> got a massive big entrance as you drive through it's incredible and I think there's a little general store around the corner there so uh, and a hotel of course so uh, not a bad little place just down the road from uh, where we were anyway off to our next port of call
chicken, chicken. We got sound, and we got follow. You gotta follow me. All right. All right. Now leading out of where we're we're we're. Okay. Sound got sound, yep, yeah, I got sound, I got sound. And we're gonna follow me. Righty ho. Come over here. Can you follow me? Where are you? Can you come here this way? Stuck in your head Is that really how it's gonna 